Hello and welcome to Code Crux. In this video, we will talk about finite automata. Uh, we'll start with the history of the automata and then we'll discuss what is finite automata, which are the different types of automata, what is finite and infinite language, and we'll uh, also uh, conclude the applications of automata at the end. The theory of automata is basically a study of abstract computing device. So uh, we are solving the problem without help of computer and we are uh, designing some mathematical model on paper and we are solving the problem. That's what automata theory is. And this theory was proposed by Alan Turing in 1930s and uh, he said that any problem which we can solve using computer it can be solved using Turing machine as well. So Turing machine is a kind of automata machine. There are various types of various types of automatas of different degree of power. So Turing machine is the most powerful abstract machine. Using that, we can compute anything that we can do with the computer. So the power of automata is tremendous and uh, we can solve almost every problem uh, uh, just through the model. In 1940s and 1950s, various simpler machines or uh, uh, that those machines or models are known as automata have been studied by a number of researchers to see that what kind of problems we can solve using them. And late in 1950s, the linguistic N. Chomsky has begun the study of formal grammar. So till 1950s, all study was, uh, was very informal. Uh, but in Chomsky has defined the proper uh, grammar for defining the language and uh, he has also established the relationship that what kind of grammars or what kind of languages can be accepted by what kind of, what kind of automata. So that relationship uh, Chomsky has established and that Chomsky uh, hierarchy we will study later on. And in 1969, as Cook has extended the Turing's concept and uh, he has developed the computability theory which says that which problems are solvable or computable and which are not. So uh, these are the very pioneer kind of work in history of finite automata. Let us first understand what finite automata is. So finite automata works based on two principle. What is the current state? and what is current input. For example, a tube light or fan is off right now and switch is the input parameter. So when we turn on, okay, when we press the switch, switch is in off state. Now when we change the state of the switch from on to off to on, then the electric equipment will turn on, right? Fan will start rotating. And when, so, so current state of fan is rotating and current state of switch is on. As I will change my input from on to off, so I am changing the state of the switch now. It is on, we are making it off. And with that, fan was in rota rotation, now gradually it will stop. Okay. So current state and the current input is very important to understand the behavior of anything. Let us take the example of vending machine. So there are five slots and they are giving us different kind of coffees. So in whichever slot we enter the coin, appropriate coffee we will get. So current state would be, uh, you, we can say standby. And when we put the coin in first slot, so based on that input, that entire automata will work and it will give us the coffee. So output is fixed that if this is the state and this is my input, then this should be the output. Okay? So whenever you are inserting the coin in the slot of cold coffee, you will get the cold coffee. You will not get the hot coffee or tea. That is how vending machine is working. So vending machine is the one of the best example of finite automata you can say. Very simplified version of the finite automata. Or ATM you can consider as an automata. You uh, insert your card then it is asking for the various inputs and based on your inputs it is working. If pin number is wrong then it will throw the error. If it is right then it will lead you to somewhere else. Right? Then it will ask to do something and according to input it will process your queries. Fine. So finite automata, we can consider it as a restricted model of computer. So computer basically is having three things, CPU, memory, and IO device. So finite automata simulates the working of CPU by its finite control unit. So all finite automata have finite control unit 
where rules are written that if current state is this and if input is this then do this so it, it simulates to cpu of actual computer for memory there is a tap is used tap will hold the input that this string is coming as a input or these are the inputs then one by one symbol will be processed and finite automata will keep changing its state so tap is used as a memory and uh, there is no auxiliary memory or explicit memory in finite automata so that is the limitation of finite automata it can do very limited work whereas computer is having a lots of other memory as well uh, so computer is very powerful so we'll start with the very abstract or the very basic model of the automata theory that is finite automata gradually we will extend our concept to more powerful automatas that is deterministic push down automata non deterministic push down automata and turing machine so turing machine is the most powerful machine that we will study at the end of the uh, tutorials so automata is a abstract mathematical model of computer and these are the various types finite automata push down automata turing machines rem models p rem models and many such other models are available and they have a different uh, degree of power finite automata we can divide it into two class finite automata with output finite automata without output under finite automata without output we will learn deterministic finite automata that is dfa non deterministic finite automata that is nfa and nfa with epsilon that is called epsilon nfa whereas under finite automata with output we have a two categories mille machines and mure machines so uh, basically under finite automata we will study this five automatas and then we have a um, few more as well um, like push down then turing machine etc what is finite language so first we need to understand that why it is a finite automata or, or, or what kind of language it will accept l is called a finite language if number of strings in it are countable so if you can count that how many strings are there in particular language then we can say it's a finite language consider that there is some machine finite automata fa is there which accepts this c language okay it accept c language so we have written one finite automata for the c language now we are giving some string as a input we are giving some string as a input so this finite automata has already rules written to accept this particular string if string is correct or if it is a part of language then automata will accept it automata will go to the accepted state and if string is not satisfying the rules of language or in another way if string is not member of language then finite automata will reject it so this is how all finite automatas are working they are having a two states either accept the input string based on the rules we have defined for particular language or you reject it consider the language l1 is equal to a a a b b a b b so here l1 contains only four strings so it is a countable and hence it is a finite language let us draw finite automata for this so finite automata always have some states which are represented by the circle and uh, initial state is um, marked by the arrow so that arrow symbol will tell us that okay this particular state is the initial state and we have to label each and every state so this state is labeled as a q0 only double a a b b a and b b four strings are acceptable so when we have when when we read a single a it is not acceptable because it is not in l1 but we are going to some state q1 from q1 if we read another a then that string is acceptable because from initial state we always have to start from the initial state and we will keep reading the symbols and we will be moving on those symbols so when i am in starting with q0 and if i read first a i am going into q1 a is not part of language so i am not in final state final state is represented by double circle then again from q1 if i read a then we are moving to q2 so that says that if we read 2a we are going to final state so 2a is acceptable and that is present in l1 so only for those strings which are in l1 we should be in final state the other string is ab so after reading a we are moving to q1 and from q1 if we read b then it should be acceptable it means we should be in final state thereafter next is ba so if i read b from q0 i am going to q1 it is not accepted because b is not part of language 
but when i read a after b then i am going to the final state because ba is part of language and fourth string is bb so when i read two b's from the initial state it should go to the final state if i read any other symbol from q2 or uh, q0 q1 it should always go to the non final states right l is infinite language if number of strings in l are infinite consider language l1 is equal to set of strings starting with a so condition is that initial symbol should be a after that it can be any symbol any combination of a and b can be there so initially we have a a then double a ab then strings of line 3 starting with a a double a a a b a b a a double b then strings of length 4 length 5 length 6 length 7 and it keeps on okay we cannot count it there are infinite such strings so this language is called infinite language let us derive finite automata for that so finite automata is a graphical representation of the model or machine uh, to accept particular string particular language so minimum length string in this language is l1 so when we read first a it should be accepted but string cannot start with b that is for sure because what is the language that set of strings starting with a so if we start with b it should go to some dead state d from which we cannot come out okay so whatever we will read from d either symbol a or b we will remain in d it is never going to be in final state so that's called a dead state if we read a from q0 it should be accepted because look at the string look at the language it also accept 1a so that we can accept but this automata is only for string a we have to make sure that it accepts all the strings which are starting with a so if my first symbol is a i can read anything after that so i will put the self loop so i can iterate through this any number of times zero time one time two time three times but it will make sure that first symbol will be definitely a so that i am in q1 and from q1 i can read any combination of a and b so that will generate all the strings which are satisfying the rules of the given language that set up strings starting with a consider string abb and let us simulate it so initially i am q0 when we read a we are going to q1 then we are reading symbol b we are moving remaining in q1 and from that we are reading another symbol b we are in q1 our string is over so when string is over and we are in final state then we can say string is accepted or string is part of language so right now after reading abb we are in q1 and q1 is a final state and hence we can say that abb is part of language l1 applications of finite automata finite automata are heavily used in lexical analyzer in compiler so all compilers are first doing the syntax analysis and uh, if our syntax is not correct for any programming language so all programming language compilers or interpreters are definitely having finite automata running in background so when we compile our program first it will go to the lexical analysis phase and that lexical analysis phase will check the validity of every string whether this string is part of language or not okay so if it is satisfy the rules of that language then compiler will allow it otherwise it will throw the error for example c language required statement at the end of every string right every statement so if statement is missing a semicolon then the automata will be in non final state and if it is in non final state for any string it will say that okay it is not a valid if it is a complete statement then for that particular statement automata will be in final state right so finite automata is uh, available in all kind of compilers and interpreter to check the program design of digital circuit is also very uh, important applications of finite automata uh, so that we can uh, check that for which input what kind of devices are being turned on or off or how current is flowing and what would be the behavior of circuit that can be simulated with the finite automata string matching is very heavily used uh, using finite automata all editors like microsoft word maybe powerpoint maybe any uh, editor you consider they all are using finite automata for the string matching whether whatever we have type it is it is correct or not so dictionary matching it is doing through finite automata all kind of text editors are using finite automata all communication protocols are also simulated using finite automata like if my input is this then go to the server side then it will check the request will send the response so that communication it depends or it can be simulated with the help of fa 
natural language processing also can be nicely done because at automata are basically for the languages so for natural language also we can construct the finite automata to process it thank you that's it for today folks see you in next video if you think this video was useful to you then please like comment and share don't forget to subscribe the channel code crafts press the bell icon for the notification of latest videos stay connected stay tuned thanks for watching bye bye